What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Scatter tutorial for you. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about how to use the extension Scatter to randomly place rocks on your landscapes that you can then use in your renderings. Um, Scatter is an extension that you can download for SketchUp. I will link to that in the notes down below. If you're interested in more extensions for SketchUp, make sure you check out my guide to my favorite extensions at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this is something I've been playing around with, uh, partially just because there's so many things in nature that are kind of random, and being able to kind of replicate that randomness inside of real life, I think is something that I'm really interested in, and uh, being able to do that in 3D modeling. So this is a good first step for that. And uh, so what I want to do is I want to use the extension Scatter in order to do this. And what that extension is designed to do is what it sounds like. It's basically designed to help you scatter different objects inside your model randomly. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off and I'm just going to draw a grid with sandbox tools. And we'll just make it something like this. We'll make it fairly simple. So we'll just give it kind of a rolling hill here, a little depression in the ground here, um, just enough to give it a little bit of interest and make it something other than a flat plane. You can kind of do whatever you want with that. I'm also going to go in with the uh, soften edges tool and I'm just going to soften all of those edges so that this actually looks like a real face in here. And if you wanted to, you could come in and um, apply something like a grass material or a uh, um, rock material or something like that. In this case, I may apply maybe one of the vegetation blur type materials in here and I may have to come back in and fix the UV mapping on that but we can use that for right now and so what I want to do is I want to use the extension scatter in order to place some random rocks on this face and so in order to do that we're gonna start off and we're gonna open up the launch scatter toolbar and so when you click on launch scatter what that's gonna do is that's gonna pop up this this toolbar and what this is designed to do is help you place these objects randomly on a face inside of SketchUp so to start off um, you can see I have my group surface right here we're gonna start off and we're gonna pick a host so the host is gonna be the face that your object is gonna get scattered along. So you can see how I click on this, even though I don't have any objects to scatter yet, this is coming in here and this is showing me that it understands that this is the face that it's gonna scatter these objects on. And then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna open up the scatter library. So the reason I'm gonna open up the scatter library is because the scatter library already has a bunch of this stuff loaded in it. And so in this case, just to save on polygon count, we're going to go ahead and go with the rocks 01 and we're going to click on load. And so what load's going to do is that's going to load this inside of scatter. And actually you can see how when you do that, when you click on something out of the library, it actually wipes out your host. So you're going to have to come back in here and reselect your host. And so what this is going to do is you can see how right now what this is doing is this is taking these rocks and it's scattering them along this face. But one thing you're going to notice about that is it's not actually generating that geometry in SketchUp, that's actually a good thing. That's not an error. The reason for that is because that's loading that in as scatter proxies. And so when it loads that in as scatter proxies, what it mean, what that means is that means every one of these boxes is going to represent these rocks, but the rocks themselves aren't getting loaded into SketchUp as geometry. And this is something that's built in to keep this from really slowing down your model. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate using the rendering extension InScape. Uh, this works for other extensions too, like V-Ray, and there's some others as well. But when I load InScape, what you're going to see is if I come in here and look at this, you're going to notice that everywhere where these red boxes are inside of Scatter, is getting loaded as a rock inside of InScape. So this is loading this um, as a rendered object inside of InScape. And so what I want to do now is I want to add a few more rocks, and I also want to add um, some. I want to add some variation to this. And so in order to add some variation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down in the scatter toolbar, and I'll kind of leave InScape up in this corner right here, just so you can see what happens to the rendering as we do this. So you can see how I kind of resize this down, but you can still see what the rendering looks like. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find the option for items per unit and I'm going to adjust that upward to like 0.6 or something like that. Then I'm going to click the button for regenerate. And so when I click regenerate you can see how you get a lot more red boxes in here now. That's because we basically doubled the number of items that this is bringing in. So if you look at InScape now 
you can see how you're getting double the number of rocks in here that you were before. And so the next thing I want to do is I want to take this and I want to adjust the uh, scale percentage. And so what I want to do is I want to adjust the um, I want to adjust the range of sizes that this is scaling these randomly. So in this case, you can see how I have a minimum and maximum of 50 and 150. And so if I was to adjust this to a minimum of like 25 and a maximum to 175, you can see how the big scaled objects in here can get bigger and smaller based on those ranges. Instead of setting this to do large and small at the same time, what you might want to do is you might want to set this scatter um, so that one of them does small rocks and one of them does large rocks. So like for example, if I do this one between 100 and 175 and I regenerate that, that's going to place all large rocks in here. And then what I could do is I could actually duplicate that and add a second scatter. Um, I could duplicate that and add a second scatter in order to scatter smaller rocks. So what I would do is I would go over to my render list. I would click the plus button. That's going to add a second scatter. Now I can come back in here and go back to my rocks and I could either do like a gravel if I wanted to or I could just do the, the rough or the smooth rocks again. I'm just going to do the rough rocks again. I'm going to load that in. And I'm going to place those on this host as well. But this time, this is going to be my smaller rocks. And so what I might do is I might go in here and adjust my scaling down below so that these are going to be between 25 and 100%. So these rocks, when they get brought in here, these are going to be my smaller rocks. And I'm also going to up the number of these rocks. And I'm going to go a fair amount higher than this time. And this time I'm going to go all the way to 0 0.01. And I'm going to click regenerate. Well now, if you look inside of Enscape, you can see how I have a number of large rocks and a number of small rocks randomly placed in here. And depending on what you were trying to do, what you were trying to create, you could up the number of small rocks even more. So if you wanted this to be like 0 0.02 or something like that, you could use that to bring in a lot of small rocks inside your rendering. And the real benefit to what we're doing here is that you're really not seeing a huge decrease in uh, performance. So like for example, you can see I can fly around this inside Inkscape really quickly um, since it's a real-time rendering program and uh, it's not really slowing down. And then if I'm in SketchUp and I fly around, you can see how these are only in here as proxies so it doesn't have a ton of geometry that it's trying to simulate in here. And so if you wanted to, you could maybe apply like a rock material to this or something like that. In my case, what I might do is use something like Inkscape's grass function so Enscape allows you to basically add grass to anything with the name grass in it. So all I would do is add the name grass in here. And so now if you were to take a look at this hill, you can see how I can render this with grass on the hill. So this is actually getting rendered as 3D geometry while I also have all of my rocks in here as well. So using something like scatter in order to place all of these and adjust all of these is really easy. And the other nice thing about this is since these are live, you can also go back in and let's say you decided this was too many rocks, you could adjust this to something like 0.15 or something like that and click regenerate again and that would actually reduce the number of rocks inside your rendering. So you can see how by adjusting that in here, um, you can see how this is really powerful because everything is live. You can kind of make that adjustment and that change be whatever you want using scatter. So and then the last thing you could do just for fun, well there's actually a lot of different things you could do, but if you wanted to you could add one more scatter in here and use that to uh, spread something like bushes or daisies or something like that in here. So let's say I wanted to bring these daisies in, I would bring these in as proxies, not as full geometry and I would click load. That would allow me to randomly place these daisies on this face as well. And you can see how this adds thousands of daisies in here, but because of the way the proxies work, these actually get loaded into Enscape, no problem. You can see how they all show up in here on this hill. Um, so the daisies all get added in, but you don't have to render all of that geometry inside of SketchUp.
So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Is this something uh, you're interested in that you might use? And what are some uses you might see for this? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.